student or working within fields that are mainly knowledge based with perhaps a little bit of content or creative workloads thrown in, then both the M1 iPad Air and the M2 MacBook Air might be really tempting devices for you to pick up. But as with any new purchase, there's temptation on either side to go with the one that you like rather than the one that's right. So today I'm going to lay it all out and make that decision a lot easier. So let's jump right in. The first thing you need to do to make the right decision with this is to be really brutally honest with yourself. What is your current workload and what are you actually going to be using this computer for? Because while it's fun to be enamored by the design or what you think might be cool to work on, you should get the right machine for your workflow. A tip I always come back to is don't buy a computer with the intention of when I finally get this, I can do that unless you're already trying to do that thing on your current device. You'll just end up with something you don't really need or you'll spend way more than you have to and you may end up never doing that thing you set out to do anyway. The second thing to consider is price. Off the bat, the iPad Air is cheaper that's for sure. But when you boost the storage up to 256 gigabytes, add a pencil, which I think is really an essential, and the Magic Keyboard, then you're looking at less than 50 pounds worth of difference, which isn't really that much. The other benefit with an iPad here is you can customize your experience to your budget. Maybe you can grab an Apple Pencil later or pick up a third party keyboard and save some money there. But with the M2 MacBook Air, you're stuck at the entry price of £1,249 and the upgrades are, of course, very expensive. So think about your budget a little before jumping in too. Before talking about each device though, there's some similarities between them which are really worth noting. Both are equally portable. The iPad is obviously smaller and lighter on its own, but once you add a keyboard like the Apple Magic one, it actually becomes thicker overall and the weight works out to about the same. So really the day-to-day -day difference is small. Both are totally silent computers too. Neither one has a fan, so you're never going to hear them while working on them, which is good news for video calls or if you're sitting in a lecture theater or shared working space. Both have all day battery life. And in the case of the MacBook Air, it's even more than great. And finally, both have USB-C inputs, although they're far from even in that regard, but more on that later. So let's take a look at the M1 iPad Air. And I've always said a similar thing about iPads and I'm going to echo that here. An iPad excels massively when it's not trying to be a laptop or a desktop machine. It's a very different device. And yes, while of course there is crossover, it really comes into its own when it's doing something only the iPad form factor and software allows. A great example of that would be in digital art. A friend of mine is a tattoo artist and she only uses an iPad and her phone to get all of her work done and I know that she wouldn't have it any other way. It's the perfect example of a specific use case that the iPad has no match for. I'm also personally a huge fan of digital note taking using the Apple Pencil, which is an utterly wonderful experience on iPad where everything just clicks. The form factor, size, responsiveness, touchscreen, it makes for an experience that is truly unique to the iPad and it trumps anything the MacBook can do in a similar space. Sadly, its hardware isn't all gravy though. Yes, it's got cameras on the back and front, which the Mac doesn't, but the USB input, which is great to have, but if you do anything with it, like plug in an external webcam, sound card, or any other more specific use case accessory, it's likely to just not work or not interface correctly with the iPad and I think that's a real shame. The iPad software is also in a constantly evolving space. While macOS has stayed relatively similar for many years, iPadOS is very much an ongoing project. With iPadOS 16 coming soon, there's a host of new features on the way that are going to make it a better product. Stage Manager is bringing true windowed multitasking with full-blown external monitor support. The Files app is getting a huge overhaul and there's loads of interesting machine learning going on under the hood. Like lifting subjects from backgrounds without use of any applications. It's also really good at normal computing tasks too. Browsing the internet, typing things up, email and consuming content are all great on the iPad. But if there's one area it still kind of fumbles, it's video calls. On the surface, it's fine. You can make and receive them perfectly well. But when it comes to screen sharing or anything like that, be prepared for your video feed to drop out or for the apps to simply not support iPad screen sharing. It's far from perfect. 
So there's lots of good with iPadOS, but plenty of limitations. And if you are thinking of heading down the iPad only route, then you need to be able to work within those limitations. The biggest one to consider is if you're a student, your iPad needs to work with all the apps you're gonna need for school, college, or university. And if you're working in the wider world, then you need to make sure you're not going to alienate yourself from other colleagues because of your device choice. And look, I'm a huge fan of the iPad. If you've seen any amount of this channel, you'll know that. But I know for my personal workflows, I would find an iPad setup to be really limiting, not liberating. Before we jump over to why the MacBook might be the better choice, I wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, The Guardian Weekly. The Guardian Weekly is a magazine that prioritizes the past seven days most memorable content with world news, opinion pieces, and long form reads. Framed with wonderful photography and insightful companion pieces, all handpicked from The Guardian and The Observer, delivered directly to your door once a week. If you're a student, then it's a great piece to use for references for assignments. There's often loads of information on emerging and up-to-date topics like data security and the climate crisis. Each issue opens up with the global report, which serves as an ideal catch up for the most pressing news from around the planet. And as ever, the more technology based sections always catch my eye. On a personal level too, it's nice to actually read something physical. I'm constantly looking at a screen for work, so relaxing with a well laid out and thoughtfully designed magazine is a nice break to have. So if this sounds interesting to you and you'd like to give it a go, for the next couple of weeks, they're giving a 50% discount for the next four months to everyone watching this video. So follow the link in the description below and go and check them out. And of course, a huge thank you goes to The Guardian for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's talk about that new M2 MacBook Air. While the iPad is great when it's doing its own thing, the MacBook Air really is the ultimate portable laptop solution. It absolutely nails the core experience of what a laptop needs to be. Great keyboard, bright screen, stunning battery life, and it has a highly portable and light form factor. And this new M2 version is a distillation of all that and it's got more power to boot. You're also not skimping out on IO. There's two USB-C ports on here along with a MagSafe, so you can charge and use both ports at the same time. Although I will admit it's sad there isn't an HDMI or an SD card slot, so you're still gonna be using a dongle. Out the gate with the MacBook, you're also getting a more free and open operating system with macOS too. So while iPad OS has gotten much better over time, macOS is still a much more robust operating system and you're generally going to get more out of it. Of course, this means access to totally pro apps like Final Cut, Logic, and Photoshop. Multitasking isn't limited in any way, and pretty much any accessory is going to be plug and play and work how you expect it to. And this thing just excels at knowledge and productivity work. And if you do work in those areas where you'll be typing all day, jumping in and out of video calls while screen sharing, or you're used to having 20 Chrome tabs open while writing up an essay while listening to music, Music while writing a bunch of emails, then the MacBook Air is going to be a much better choice. It's also an absolute battery beast, and if you're going to be doing those more basic computing tasks, then expect two days of battery life without breaking a sweat. Even when I was trialing it out with Final Cut and photo editing in Lightroom, I was still pushing around two days of use, which is absolutely amazing. So look, both devices are excellent in their own way. So I'll try and sum it up like this. I think for about 10 to 15% of people out there, the iPad is completely the right choice. It has the potential to push your creativity in the best way possible, and you'll find the form factor and iPad OS to be ideal for your needs, because when it does work for you, it works so well. But I generally think, and I throw myself into this category, that the other 85% will find much more use from a traditional laptop with access to pro-level apps, no strange OS limitations, and the multitasking we all know and love. The M2 MacBook Air is an utterly excellent way to go for that, and that's what I would personally choose. I'll actually link to my full review here if you haven't seen it, but I was shocked at how much it could handle of my creator-focused workflows, even though it's not specifically designed for that. I'm also totally happy to recommend the base model M2 Air to most people, even with the SSD drama, 
from my work in the freelance world and just observations of people using the MacBook Airs, it's gonna be so, so rare you're gonna handle huge files or you're ever gonna push that MacBook to its limit. So honestly, it will be just fine. Obviously, if you can upgrade the storage, then do. I don't like the slower SSD as much as the next person, but it's not a product killer like many are making it out to be. And finally, we've got to acknowledge the M1 MacBook Air because it's still such a good option and maybe it's an even fairer comparison between that and the M1 iPad Air. It's cheaper than the M2 MacBook Air and the iPad Air if you spec it up and add a keyboard and it still has a fantastic design. It keeps the amazing battery life. Not to mention you can find this thing on sale or refurbished for well under the £999 asking price. So if you do fit into the MacBook category, but understandably don't want to shell out for the M2, this is still a fantastic way to go and you shouldn't feel wrong for considering it at all. It's still a brilliant machine. So that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on this one. I hope that's been helpful for you. If you are a student or if you're just debating between these two devices, I'd love to hear from you and what your choice would be in the comments below. Or if you've already made the choice, then let us know how you're getting on with it. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.